So some of you who watch the old channel remember the video about this biotech stock called BBIO, Bridge Biopharma, right? We talked about this setup when they had a very promising kind of cure or medicine for dwarfism um, or treatment, right? And so this is a stock that was setting up nicely, had a bunch of bullish catalyst. It was coming off the bottom, right? A big decline phase into the bear market. And, you know, the same kind of bottom that like 90% of stocks made, um, you know, coming, whether it was NVIDIA, you know, Big Tech or, or Microsoft or anything after that bear market, we saw these bases form where we got Jorbit divergence. We broke through the EMAs with green dots showing up on a chart, lower time frame green tags. We had that first pullback. We had many trading setups there, right? A lot of these were, you know, coming into Fibonacci levels, whether that's 618 or, you know, 50% or even 382 fib for something stronger. Of course, something as strong as NVIDIA won't, um, won't come as deep as the 618. This this was in everything, right? It was in big tech. These were setups that we went, you know, all over the place. Again, whether it's a base cup and hand or it's more of a double bottom, breakthrough, green dots, lower time frame, green tags, that pull back to the fibs and the moving averages, right? That 50% fib. And we saw the same setup in BBIO, right? These all happen at different time frames, right? This one happened, uh, you know, March 23. And it was as those clinical trials. And what happens is, as you guys know, as Jupiter Pendulum traders, well, by the way, today we're going to talk about another biotech that's setting up right now. It's called Viking Therapeutics. Those of you who like spoilers have probably already read the top right here. But let me just finish. Um, those Jupiter, those momentum traders know that what we do is when we trade higher highs, when we break out to higher highs with momentum in form of green candles, green dots on a chart and green dots below the chart, we wait for a pullback and then we wait for different setups, right? And we wait for divergent pendulum, green shade, which is oversold conditions. Sometimes we get a shade flip <clears throat> that's a light green kind of like this, which, you know, just so happens to be we had a shade flip here and that called the exact bottom. But sometimes we don't get the shade flip on the pullback, but you know, this is what you want to do. The EMAs cross over, you hold the EMAs as support. No shade flip came because shade didn't turn, uh, pendulum didn't flip green when the shade turned off. But what we did get is a, a breakout candle. So we have two kind of entries, right? The pullback and the breakout. So what ended up happening, we had a nice breakout of consolidation right there. You can see the breakout candle with the green dot. Um, and that's a nice entry, right? Uh, confirmation candle. You know, we, we formed another pivot here, breakout again. And this this was a great setup. I mean, this setup is still in profits. If anybody held that breakout, right? You know, if you took that on the close, you know, just just 40 days later, you up over 100%. So worked out quite nicely, right? And this happens over and over again. This gap up, this is a good a fresh green tug, fresh green candles. That means you want to buy the pullback. You come back, you double bottom, again, divergence. Uh, and, and same kind of thing here, double bottom, you break out with a boom, you have pivot highs. When we get tight, you like that break out another good trade. It seems like a small move, but that in and of itself is a 37% move, right? Different trading opportunities, this thing, I haven't kept up with the narratives, but right now it's kind of chopping below the moving averages. The huge move is kind of done. Okay. But today we're going to talk about VKTX, Viking Therapeutics. So this is an article from The Motley Fool. It's a very interesting catalyst coming up for this biotech stock, which they say it's the best stock to invest 1,000. They are, you know, they have a few promising drug programs nearing maturity. They're going to have competition, of course, but they have a nice balance sheet so they can afford to spend money on product development, at least for now, even though they have their pre-revenue, right? So this is a pure biotech play, right? This is not one of these giants like Eli Lilly, Novo Nordisk. One of the biggest, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world, these two. And we're going to touch back on these because these are making a killing right now fighting obesity. And I made a video about this on my channel. So go check that out. Billions are being added to their top line revenue fighting obesity with, I, for, I don't even remember the name of that, that super famous uh, new drug. Um, <clears throat> anyways, while it doesn't have any medicines approved for sale at the moment, it has a couple of mid-stage programs that are shaping up to make a big splash in their target markets, assuming they end up getting approved. On average, the, uh, you know, the analyst on Wall Street sees uh, over 100% rise over the next 12 months, so estimations are baked to the upside. The candidate is called VK2735. It's been developed as an injection to help people lose weight, and it just wrapped up its phase two clinical trials with flying colors. So this is the same theme as the Eli Lilly, as the Novo Nordisk, as these, the ones we talked about, the, the, the big, tech, big pharma, 
is 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 can make a canon fighting um let's see what it's called um obesity drug it's an injection too right uh so zep bound is theirs um there's different um uh, what's the name glp1 right so glp1 and this new class of medications right and theirs is called zep bound right but novo nordisk has one um Zempic is one right and so we, we go we go into detail in the other video about that but now viking therapeutics is kind of developing a uh, competitor to this so i don't know if this will qualify as a glp1 kind of class of medications but it's the same market right after a little more than three months patients lost nearly 15 percent of their body weight well in excess of the two percent weight loss by patients who were treated with a placebo. So those are how the, right, you get, you know, patients, um, some of them with a placebo, no actual drug. You know, they don't know which is which, but they're on the same kind of lifestyle routine, right? And so they're probably doing similar amounts of exercise and, and, and diet, but you can see the discrepancy here, 15%. So overall side effects were mild and there weren't any red flags in terms of safety. The next step will be to run the late stage clinical trial and prepare paperwork for submitting to regulators to get commercialization approval. Cracking into the surging market for obesity therapies would give Viking the revenue stream it currently lacks and free the company from needing to raise money by issuing shares and taking on debt. At the close of the first quarter, they have $963 million in cash. So that's good. So cash and short-term investments. They have zero long-term debt. That's also good. So a billion dollars right here. This money they've raised. No long-term debt. And they're R&D. You know, they're spending $24 million. Right, so per quarter, so that you can see they have a big, you know, they have a, they have a lot of run run rate, big run rate. They they they're not in any danger. So um, even though it needs income because it's pre income um, with no, no drugs, uh, you know, approved for commercialization yet, they're not in any sort of tremendous pressure. Viking is also trying to enter the market. So that's one, right? And that's not the only one. They have another one. So obesity. They're also trying to enter the market for metabolic associated steatohepatitis. So I definitely butchered that. Is VK2809 program is currently in phase 2B, so they haven't finished phase 2 trials uh, with flying yet, with like, like the obesity drug, um, but the data is promising. After 52 weeks of treatment, 75% of patients experienced a resolution of their MASH, and 48% experienced that resolution as well as substantial improvement in their degree of liver fibrosis. Okay, so 75% is a pretty, pretty nice number there. The timeline to reaching the market is still at least a couple of years long, but if the program continues to yield good data, this biotech could well have two different blockbuster drugs on the market by 2027. Now that's very interesting, right? Because this is like interest rates, right? These things don't happen when the news when the drug goes on sale and then a news article comes out a year later that they just added a billion to their top line with this blockbuster drug. No, people anticipate all this. So it's good, these kind of articles, that's why I wanna share and make these kind of videos for you guys. It's good to know what's in the works. Why is something moving up now, right? We've been in a bull market. And I talk about this for a long time, right? Almost two years, but we haven't cut rates yet. We haven't cut rates yet. The majority of the move happens before the rates are cut, right? So it's the same kind of thing, right? And so VKT, like in therapeutics, VKTX, let's go back here, okay? Um, so that's good. So there's also risk. Let's first touch on the risks. So one is the competition, which we talked about, uh, Eli Lilly and Nova Nordis, super powerful. Um, it's a gold rush. This obesity thing is a gold rush, right? And so we can go to, if you don't know, because you only kind of trade tech or crypto, you know, these are the largest companies in the world. NVIDIA is number one right now, 3.39 trillion, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, everybody knows this, Meta, you know, they kind of call this the Mac 7 along with Tesla. Um, <clears throat> but there's Eli Lilly, right? So Eli Lilly, is the 10th biggest company in the world, right? You have TSMC right here also, right? Semiconductor, um, most important company in the world, in my opinion. Um, they are the semi, they create all the semis. And there's Novo Nordisk, right? So number 10 and number 12, these two giant pharma companies are two of the biggest. And in the top 100, there's like 20 pharma companies, right? There's Abbott, Abbott right there, so ABT. There's Amgen right there. There is a bunch, there's Pfizer right there, Intuitive Surgicals is super cool, right? Because they bring tech into the, the situation. There is AstraZeneca right there. I probably missed some because I'm going fast, AbbVie, Merck. So it's not just tech. 
you know, there's a huge space right here and, and these, these biotech and pharma companies. And they're doing pretty interesting things, right? So one risk to Viking is competition from the big dog. So this is essentially like saying, okay, so, uh, you know, Palantir has AI or, or, you know, one of these semiconductors making chips, but what's the risk? Well, so is NVIDIA, but, you know, okay, so competition, right? So Qualcomm's making chips, but so is NVIDIA, right? But, you know, they focus on different things, okay? <clears throat> At least in the market for weight loss medicines, the odds are good that Viking can find enough market share to make its stock a good investment. Think of it as a big uh, fish in a big ocean. It doesn't mean if the big fish eats most of the food um, because there are sure to be more than enough scraps to go around, right? Obesity market's huge, especially in America. Um, and I'm not sure, probably most of the world, I, I read it's a 40% obesity in the US. I can't even believe that. Um, but, but, you know, crazy if and probably true. Um, but the market's just huge, right? And so people get these kind of it's kind of sad actually but lazy way you know instead of exercise and diet which is what we, everyone should be doing um but you know anything that helps i guess <clears throat> is an advancement um science um anyways with all that said it's also important to remember this is a pre-revenue biotech stock its success is fully dependent on producing favorable clinical trial results that regulators accept as valid okay so VK2735's prior clinical suggests it has a good shot sailing through its phase three trials and getting an enthusiastic approval from the FDA. Late stage mishaps and unexpected outcomes do occur sometimes, right? Okay, so this is a $5 billion company. So it is kind of a small cap company, uh, small, small mid cap, and um, there is certainly room for growth, right? We saw um, what some of the biggest companies um, you know, in the world um, can get to. So no revenue, right? So no, no, no kind of valuation on this, at least in terms of price to earnings. So hopefully by 2027, these drugs are out there. They're going to be making um, some nice revenue. You can see they're burning through. Yeah, okay, so 100 million operating. Um, they're losing 100 million a year in their operations, which kind of is in line with what the article said, about 25 million on R&D each quarter, right? And so, okay. And so they need to bring in some top line. They don't, they have a good balance sheet, you know, so we can see there's the 963 million in, in total cash and in kind of short-term assets, liabilities are small. Okay, liabilities are very small, no long-term debt, right? So there's, there's good opportunity here for a super clean balance sheet. You can see they have issued some stock for, you know, pretty, they were pretty stable, but from 2022 to 2023, they did issue some stock and then about a 10% increase in the last report as well. So again, if they can get these drugs onto the market, they have a very healthy balance sheet, no debt, no interest rate payments, um, but they can stop doing this because they'll be bringing in um, you know, revenue or, or cash through through the top line revenue. And so that would be nice for them. We, can ch uh, we can't even check our price to sales, even though they're pre-profits because they don't even have sales. So there's no valuation, but it's, it's an opportunity, right? A clean balance sheet and, you know, potential blockbuster drugs with very good res promising results. Okay, so let's go to Viking Therapeutics and the chart's trading well, right? This is kind of a long IPO base, giant macro double bottom, if you will. This is um, a high right here and I, I missed through it, right? It's right here um, and that's a big breakout, right? And so boom, broke through the highs when f with momentum, volume, you know, Earnings, I don't even know how there is earnings there, to be honest. Okay, so they lost less than they were projected to this. That's funny. Okay, so green momentum, volume, green tongues, all that gap up on that. This is that first pullback, and this is that first major, I mean, I guess they had one back here, right, in late 2022. Um, and you can see, guys, you know, the system works everywhere. I mean, look, there's Jorbit divergence, red dots, lower load, no dots, boom, momentum candle, that's an up move, boom, boom, um, you know, Boom. Okay, I'm saying boom without explaining. Then you break through higher highs, and anytime we break through higher highs with green dots, green momentum, fresh green tag, we know we want to buy pullbacks. In this case, we did get the shade flip on the pullback. Um, so you're pulling back, you're waiting for either a shade flip or a momentum candle. We got both back to back, um, and you're just reading the signs as you go. You know, you, you're waiting for some pendulum divergence, some green shade. You have a pink dot here, that means wait because you're going to get lower lows. You get the lower lows, you get the shade flip, good entry, confirmation. Um, this candle, even better entry as well um, for confirmation because that's the momentum candle. And similar to the other one, you know, that's over 100% in a very short amount of time. 
um, gap and go, shade flip candle, gap and go, another one that worked out very well. And, and you get the picture, right? <clears throat> and so we follow momentum. So here's a new opportunity where we've had a nice impulsive move. Um, and now we've been pulling on back since February, right? So we've been pulling on back for about a third of a year and maybe about four months. And we're at that key moving average, the long-term moving average. We have you know tremendous divergence on the pendulum, all these green shades. We're in oversold conditions. We haven't seen any red dots on a pink dot, but that's been already nullified. There's no more dots. So we have divergence on the Jorbit as well. Any kind of entry candle here, a nice strong shade flip with volume or a double bottom, or you know, you consolidate, make a pivot high and break through with a momentum candle will be a good buying opportunity, right? Because this is that first test of that long-term moving average since this impulsive move, right? This impulsive move was surfing short-term moving averages, that first test of the long-term. It's always an interesting opportunity to get involved, right? We don't know how high this can go, but just to test the most recent or the all-time highs here is a 100% move, right? Just to test the all-time highs here, okay? So definitely one you want to keep on your radar. Just wanted to make that video for you guys. Looks like AbV um, wins FDA nod for new Sky Rizzi indication. So we can talk about this maybe in another video. By the way, Switzerland has cut rates for the second time already. ECB's already done it. Canada's already done it. I'm telling you guys, it's coming. Um, don't listen to bearish headlines. And Ethereum actually uh, won its case for the SEC. So things are looking pretty good. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know if I should talk about AbbVV in this video. Probably a separate video. Give, us, give ourselves more content. This one's already long. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. Subscribe, like. See you on the next one. Best of luck. Peace.